What's up there, sword friends? Today I have for you a detailed review of the Raptor series from Hanwei, the Unokubi Zukuri. Check it out. Unokubi Zukuri is a sword shape of an historical era of feudal Japan. It was shaped after a bird, the Cormorant. Therefore, it is known as the cormorant's neck shape, related to the bird's scoop in the back of its neck. The metal of the Yunokobi Zukuri is thinned out on the upper two-thirds of the mune to make the sword lighter and then thickens out again near the, near the kasaki to give it that unique diamond-like appearance. It brings the weight distribution back towards the suba, making it different than the shinogi-style blade where the heft of the sword is closer to the medium length of the blade. This blade geometry was made for its original intended Japanese weapon called the Naginata. This was a prominent carry weapon from the 11th to 13th centuries in Japan. The Naginata had a very long pole style handle, so much so that the Yunokubi blade was forged so the weight distribution favored the handle to make it a much more maneuverable weapon and that could deliver deadly cutting ability. The Naginata, after the 13th and 14th centuries, was phased out and made into the Katana that we all know today with a shorter handle. But the smiths and handlers that preferred the Yunokubi geometry developed around the 15th century a Naginata Naoshi style blade in a Yunokubi Zukuri style katana, mainly at that time for aesthetic reasons. This trend continued past Japan into Korea, such as Admiral Yi Sun Shin's twin swords. There were many sword shapes that came out of this trend as well that continued the trend of new sword architectures in Japan and beyond. The Yunokubi Zukuri blades of today are made to be aesthetically beautiful and functionally good, maneuverable cutters. Because of the better quality of steel available for use today, the thinned out upper portion of the blade doesn't affect the strength of the blade by much, but makes it a lighter blade with a point of balance closer to the hands, while making the kisaki very thick and strong, also making the slicing ability on the upper portion of the blade very powerful. Hanwei's integration of this geometry is present in the Raptor series. So now let's dig into the details of this Raptor Yunokubi Zukuri Katana from Hanwei Forge. All right, guys, before I start up with the video, I try to uh, give out some shout outs or give some observations to uh, other members of our sword community. We're a really tightly knit sword community. It's growing more and more every day. And I just wanted to, uh, in the beginning of all my videos, I really try to give some shout outs to some guys that uh, really need to be observed. And uh, I really re would recommend that you check out their channels for additional sword reviews. So the first guy that I wanted to mention was Michael Rizzo. Uh, then there's Gora Steve. Gora Steve, great all-around guy from Las Vegas. Um, he's a MacGyver of, uh, of swords. He finds a way to make things work. And uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, the contraptions he puts together, great cutter. He has some great cutting videos. Next guy is Eric117. Fantastic cutter. I gave him a shout out on his channel before. Next guy is Adam, five words. Uh, also part of our sword community, great sword reviews, check him out. Now, if you're into knives, uh, you have to subscribe to Choir Boys Cultery. Scab and Megatron, husband and wife team, fantastic people. Uh, the highlight of their video is, uh, their, their highlight of every video they put out, uh, they, it's a great cause for, for our veterans out there. Um, he does a great job in terms of what he does with his knife reviews. He has a arsenal of knives next channel you should definitely check out if you're into knives is the shredder knife reviews father and some team I, I really can't say enough about this channel they do a great job uh father again father and son helping each other out to make everything work to uh to demonstrate the knives and obviously my honorable mentions carl ruger eric hussein and of course matthew jensen if you didn't subscribe subscribe to him already 
uh, you're doing something wrong if you're into swords. Matthew Jensen is pretty much king of uh, sword reviews. All these guys are great. I think you should check them all out. And uh, basically go to uh, their sites, subscribe to their channels, let them know Joe from uh, Steel, Forge, and Fire uh, sent you over. And uh, you'll definitely, you won't regret it. You'll enjoy their channels. You'll enjoy their content. Uh, they put out a lot of great stuff. And uh, definitely uh, subscribe to them. And to all my own subscribers, I want to thank you for your subscriptions. Thank you for following my content. Please try to get me some more subscriptions out there, guys. It'll allow me to get uh, more and more content out to you. Guys, a lot of people have different opinions about Hanwei. I can't say that I am a Hanwei connoisseur. I have much experience with Hanwei. I really only own about two Hanwei swords, uh, the Practical XL and uh, this uh, Uno. There's people who love Hanwei, and there's people who always have a, have all the critiques in the world for Hanwei. Uh, the fact of the matter is, they're one of the largest production companies of katana out there. So naturally, with that many swords that they produce, there's always going to be the good and the bad. Is Hanwei perfect? No, absolutely not. Do they make a very solid sword? Yes, they do. And uh, they make really good quality products. Um, compared to a lot of sword man manufacturers out there. Talking specifically about this, this Uno here, is it the end all be all Uno Kubi Zukuri? No, absolutely not. I mean, you have other options out there. You have uh, Munatoshi Viper, which makes a great sword. The uh, Huawei makes a good Uno. The HSTS makes an incredible Uno. Jayku makes an Uno. I mean, you could you go down the line, everyone makes uh, their own iteration of an uh, Uno Kubi Zukuri. Whatever sword that you have, there's always another sword out there that can be compared to, or there's other options out there. Uh, you can't buy a sword without having other options out there to uh, to be able to shop around. So you just, you know, you kind of have to do your research, out with your options. Maybe the steel is better on one particular sword. Maybe the weight works better for you. Maybe the uh, the size of the ska uh, works better for you. You might want a very long, elongated ska. You may want something about 10 inches, 11 inches. You have to kind of just outweigh your options and see what works best for you. And if you're a collector and you're a practitioner, you know what works best for you. A lot of people have said it's a sword for beginners. Now, I think they might say that because of the steel. I mean, it's a 5160, yes, it's a 5160 high carbon spring steel. So there's a little margin for, of error there for misdirected cuts and all that. But that's not to say that this sword is not going to sing okay, in the hands of a professional practitioner. It's a matter of just picking up the sword, seeing what works for you, and making it work in your own hands. And uh, before you even buy it, like I said, do your research, look at the details of each sword, and try to make the best uh, decision for the sword that works for you. I think it's a great offering in the Raptor series. I think the Raptor series in general from uh, Anway is very good. Some may argue that. I mean, they may have had lemons and there's a lot of bad critique out there, but this particular sword so far, so good. I think it's a great sword, it's a solid sword. And guys, please, one piece of advice when you're shopping Hanway. You have to shop around, okay? Hanway, in terms of how their price structure from company to company differs incredibly. I mean, hundreds of dollars in difference. I mean, you're talking about this uh, Unokubi Zakuri on the CAS website retails at $460. At Cultivatina, it's currently at $320, $330. I got this, this uh, Nukumi Zakuri from uh, the SBG Sword Store for $249. If they are a genuine Hanway provider, obviously, and their prices are, are beating out the other guys, I think you're gonna get a fine product. I don't think there's any difference uh, from provider to provider, it's just that everyone prices it differently. It's not only the price of the sword, the measurements of this, of many of the Hanway products differs from website to website. So it's very hard to kind of decide who is right and who is wrong. Uh, so that's why I always make it my business to measure, do my own measurements on all my swords. Uh, because the one that you have in your hands is pretty much what it's going to be. I mean, it's going to differ from uh, production sword to production sword, but the, the measurements from Cultivatina to CAS to S SBG are completely different. I mean, I, I measured this, uh, I measured this SCA at 13 inches. Okay, Cultivatina, Cultivatina actually came in at um, like a whole inch shorter uh, SPG came in a little bit shorter, 
Uh, it's just uh, the measurements are all out of whack. Even the uh, the actual Nagasa, the actual blade from the Munamachi, I came in at about 28.2, and uh, Cultivatini came like a whole inch longer. So um, I'm gonna put in all the measurements that I made of this particular sword on the description as well. But the weight of the sword itself, it's about, um, I weighed the particular sword at around uh, two pounds, 2.49 ounces to be exact is what I weighed the sword at. Um, it's, def the weight distribution is fantastic with this sword. It's got a point of balance at around 4.25, 4 uh, which is pretty much in line with all the uh, point of balances, the POBs on all the, all the sites. Um, it's, fits pretty good in the side. There's not much sword rattle. I mean, a little bit more towards the low end, but not not anything that really disturbs you that much. But it's a very solid sword. Everything about it is pretty solid. All right, so, so the first thing we're gonna start with, guys, is where we always start. We'll do a Matthew Jensen style. We're gonna start with the Kashira. Is, um, everything is a Raptor theme. Now, when I say Raptor, it's uh, not Velociraptor, but Raptor as in Bird of Prey. So you have what I think might be like a hawk or an eagle, but it's, uh, it's some kind of a bird of prey theme on all the pieces um, of the Raptor series, which I think are pretty damn cool. But they're done very well. The one thing that Hanway does with uh, all of their uh, pieces, the, uh, the, the, the Kashida, the Fuchi, their Subas, they do a great job in casting their pieces. The transitions could have been better. It's nothing that really disturbs me that much. But for the most part, uh, they do a pretty good job with um, the tightness of them, the details of them. It's uh, the knot is done pretty well. You have a suede type of uh, suede type of wrap. It's got the uh, diamonds are pretty much not very even. You know, it doesn't bother me that much. It's actually a lot more even than a lot of other pictures of uh, other sword reviews I've seen out there. The Manuki is actually really put on here tight. I don't know how the hell they do it, but uh, they're not coming off. I really can't figure out how they got it done, but they're done pretty well. Not, I've heard of uh, some sharp edges, but this mine particularly doesn't have any edges that really bother me or really uh, stick into my hand or anything like that. No major discomfort or anything like that. One thing particularly about the, uh, the Ska, it's, um, it's got a, a very wide handle. Um, but it's also very thin on this side of here. So I feel like when you first see it, you think it's gonna be uncomfortable in hand, but when you really get in your hand and you put your hand around it, uh, it kind of gives you perfect edge alignment in the form of how it's made. So I think it actually fits very comfortable in hand because it's not very thick on this side, it's just very wide on this side. So it kind of fits right into your hand. I would say I have pretty much medium to slightly large hands and it fits pretty well in my hands and it's actually very very comfortable on the swing uh the sway material is very soft it's very grippy um i see um no problems with basically how this handle is made up i mean it might not work for everyone but for me i think it actually my hand kind of fits very perfectly right onto the handle when we get into the fuchi you also have like a bird bird's head you know with very polished uh black iron and they're all iron fittings uh, bird on one side and straight iron on the other side. Again, you know, very simple. Nothing too flashy or anything like that. But whatever details they put on as far as the rat, the, uh, the bird of prey or the raptor, it's done very, very well. You can see all the fine details of the eyes and the beak and the feathers. Uh, I think it's just, it's done very, very well. The Suba, you have what seems to be a uh, bird on a perch. Again, very detailed in the feathers. Everything looks great. It's a little thin for the most part. Um, but it is a solid iron piece. I don't see any big problems with it. Uh, everything came in very tight. Transitions again, uh, uh, which I didn't mention between the Fuji and the Ito, are also done pretty well actually on this sword. I don't see any problems there. Nothing bites into your hand. It could always be done better, obviously. Maybe other, other sword manufacturers might do it better. I know the Munitoshi uh, Viper has a better, uh, a tighter Ito wrap. Um, so again, it's everything differs from sword to sword. The Saya is uh, like a matte finish, uh, doesn't show any fingerprints. It's a very nice painted Saya. There are some blemishes which you won't really see on the camera. You might see it on the close up video shots. There are some blemishes. It's not absolutely perfect, but it is done pretty well. It's very smooth. It tapers, it actually tapers very slightly towards the uh, Kasaki, 
but for the most part uh, it fits very well in here it goes in and out very easily with uh, with just a little thumb pull goes in very tight um, it doesn't fall out very easily it holds in place very well and it comes out very easily and smoothly when you need it so uh, I have no problem with how the side is made up and uh, you know you have all the bullhorn and the koiguchi the uh, Kurigata, the Kojiri, you have all the bullhorn in the places that you want it to be in. The Segeo is just a very thin Segeo. I mean, I've seen some better Segeos on other Hanwei swords, like my Practical XL has a little bit of a thicker, more present Segeo, and it's actually, this is a little bit short compared to my other Hanwei swords, but for the most part, um, they throw it in, does the job. Now, getting into the blades, so again, this is a Unokubi Tsukuri style blade. So you notice you have the bohai on the top. Okay, it's a very distinct type of bohai on the on the Uno swords. It actually starts off at 0 0.5, 0 0.5 centimeters at the habaki. Then it tapers to the middle at 0 0.342 centimeters. And then it actually gets thicker at the Kasaki to give you that diamond at 0 0.6 inches. So it's going, you know, it's pretty amazing. I mean, these the, the mune of the sword is going from uh, five to three to six centimeters, 0.6 centimeters up and down. Um, and it, it just an amazing thing to look at. It's a really, really pretty blade to look at. Okay, so the thinning out of the blade on the Mune before the Kasaki on the two on two thirds of the two thirds up on the blade is kind of another way for them to uh, kind of thin out the blade. Um, on the Mune to make it to, to help with the weight distribution to bring basic weight distribution at, at around four and a half okay a little bit closer to the handle so it fits really nice and it, it actually feels really nice in the hand you have a lot of control on the tip of the sword and um, you can honestly do some really nice quick cuts with it I haven't cut with it yet a uh, little casualty here, okay, slice my thumb open, so I haven't really been able to cut with it yet, but I am actually looking forward to it. Occupational hazard for uh, reviewing swords and maintaining swords and all that, I guess, you know, you're gonna get it cut here and there. With this sword, it's got a nice little mirror polish, dual tone, there's no hamon on the blade. Um, it actually, I read that this is differentially hardened, but I think it's a through hardened blade, and that's why there's no uh, apparent hamon on the blade. Uh, again, it's a 5160 spring steel. Okay, it does take a, it will take a bend. Okay, before it actually breaks, uh, so there's a little more resilience there. Uh, if you do have some bad cuts, uh, which is again great for a beginning beginner with the type of steel that it comes with, but it's also a really wonderful practitioner sword because it feels just so nimble and light in the hand. And you have so much control of the tip. Okay, because the weight distribution is really coming to the handle which I mentioned a million times but I can't mention enough because that's really the highlight of this type of uh, Unokubi Zukuri architecture. Plain polished brass habaki nothing too special about it I actually polished it up a little bit more uh, with a brass cleaner um, to give it a little bit more of a keen shine which is which I pretty much recommend that you do with all your habakis you should definitely polish it out because the way you get it from the forge is never quite polished but if you throw a little polish cleaner on it actually really shines and this is actually coming out really really came out really good after I polished it up but again it's just a simple habaki does the job it fits very well on the blade I have no complaints uh, with how it fits the uh, I kind of wish the seppas were kind of maybe shaved a little bit more like they did with my practical XL where they kind of shaved the ends a little bit more to match up with the suba holes it could always be better again you know what guys these swords are not perfect it's very hard to get a perfect sword even when you're spending you know thousands of dollars on a sword nothing is ever quite perfect but if it works in your hand it does the job it doesn't fall apart and it you know gives you the enjoyment and the gratification from using it then that's really what's important at the end of the day guys different swords for different guys and gals. Motohaba, the width of the blade actually starts off at 1.3 inches. It's a very wide blade um, and it tapers to about 1.2 inches and then it goes to about one inch at the Kasaki. Uh, so it's it's a very wide blade pretty much throughout the whole length of the blade uh, which will make it a great cutter for that reason and it's thin in the middle so the upper two-thirds of the blade is really where you want to cut 
you know uh, cut with your ta uh, your targets with. All right, guys. So this is the uh, Raptor series from Hanway Forge. You know Kubi Zakuri. Um, I think it's a great all-around sword. It's a great representation from Hanway with the in the Ayuno Kubi Zakuri. I like the size of the handle of the scar because it's actually more similar to the original iteration, which is the Naginata, uh, that long pole with the, with the uh, Unukubi Zakuri blade. So I think actually, historically, I think this is very a very great, a great presentation from Hanway to give you such a long handle. And I personally really like the long handles. I like to be able to spread my hands apart. Um, I know the Munitoshi is a little bit shorter, um, maybe it's about 10.5 or something like that. Uh, but I do like the way um, Hanway made up this uh, Inukubi Zakuri. Uh, it's a solid sword, feels great in the hand. I love everything about it. I like the details of the, uh, the, the casting pieces. Uh, the transitions, while being very good, could always be better. The Ito could always be tighter, uh, but that's always something that um, Hanway falls on as far as the Ito not being tight. But this is actually surprisingly pretty tight. I mean, you know, there's, there's spots where it's a lot tighter than others for the most part, but the middle doesn't move at all, and the Manuki doesn't move at all. I mean, I don't know how they put this thing on here, but it's done very, very tight. So, um, it's a great all-around sword from uh, from Hanway, guys. Sorry for the long video. There's a lot of details that I wanted to get out there. I'm going to put a lot of information in terms of measurements in the descriptions. I hope this video worked out for you guys. I hope it was, it was informative for you. I hope you got something out of it. Sorry it was so long, but, you know, all my videos are long. Uh, but... That's all I got for you guys. Until the next video, please subscribe. Please take a look at the shout outs I put in the beginning of the video. If you haven't, please take a look at it. Great guys for you to follow as well to give you some great information on uh, sword reviews and knife reviews and uh, cutting and everything, everything sword craft. Uh, so again, that's all I got for you guys. Have a great night. Have a great day. Have a great afternoon. Whenever you're watching this, peace out, everybody. Have a good one.